When did you know it was going to go bad for Colorado on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon? I, honestly, I, I had suspicions before the season. I think they have done so much in surprising people in the first three weeks. Dion deserves an overwhelming amount of credit. But before the season, the headline was when you overturn this much of your roster at a school that's a power five school, but not one of the big time blue bloods. This isn't Lane Kiffin doing this at Ole Miss every year. This isn't Brian Kelly at LSU or Lincoln Riley at USC, where you're going to be able to draw and still maintain some of the depth along the lines of scrimmage. That was one of the areas that was always going to be most difficult for Colorado. And that's what this Oregon program was built around when Mario Cristobal's here and Dan Lanning through now a season and change has done a really good job developing, maintaining. So I had my worries going into this one and they were confirmed within the first couple of drives. This was as lopsided a battle along the offensive and defensive lines of scrimmage as I've ever seen in person at a football game. Any problem with Oregon giving the appearance they were running up the score? No, not at all. And I don't think there's a single player on Colorado's team including Deion Sanders, their coach that would either. I always said as a player, I never cared about those end game politics. If you're bashing our heads in and good enough to go out there and beat us, it's my job to stop you. It's our job to stop you. Deion Sanders at his core is a Bowden guy. He's an old school coach. And so I'm sure that same second sentiment's been echoed. This is about us and about us needing to respond to this. So no, I have zero problem with that. Dan Lanning and company had an opportunity. All the conversation was about Colorado. All the coverage is about Colorado. And this was going to be their entrance, I think, into the national conversation. They announced it with authority. They know what this is. You got to do some politicking in college football in the playoff era. What do you expect? this next weekend with Colorado and USC. I don't know if there's an amount of points big enough that you could give me. Now, I'll say this. It won't look as ugly on one side, right? Shadur Sanders, I felt terrible for in this game. He was under duress pretty much every drop back, and he came into that game, hit more than any quarterback in college football, sacked more than any quarterback in college football, and that continued as Oregon put up historic numbers in that category. USC's defense, we know, isn't going to put up that same kind of resistance. So I expect Shadur Sanders in this offense, even without Travis Hunter, to be able to move the ball against USC. But on the other side, for Caleb Williams in that offense, it, they're going to continue to be a buzzsaw. It's what they've always been. So this is the reality check, I think, for people that were parachuting in on this that weren't necessarily familiar with the realities around college football. Because, Dan, as you know, the Pac-12 – probably the deepest conference in terms of competitors in college football this year as we get into October and November. 